Let us look at some techniques of manipulating discrete time and continuous time signals. The first technique is transformation of independent variable. Transformation of independent variable that is time. For continuous time signal we represent it as t and for the discrete time signals the same time is represented as n. So a discrete signal x of n may be shifted in time by replacing the independent variable that is n by n minus k where k is a integer. k is a integer. So k can take both positive values and negative values. So if k is a positive integer, then this time shift of this uh, discrete signal x of n, it results in the delay of the signal by k units of time. So when k is positive, say k is equal to 2, for example, then x of n minus 2 is nothing but a signal x of n which is delayed by 2 units. On the other hand, if this integer is negative, if k is negative, then for example, k as minus 2, then x of plus 2 will be a signal which will result in advance of the signal. We refer it to as the signal is advanced, advanced by 2 units in this case. 2 units of time. So the similar method is applicable for continuous time signals. For continuous time signals, we represent it as x of t and if k is positive, then this will become x of t minus k, a signal x of t which is delayed by k units of time and if k is negative, then this signal becomes x of t plus k so which means x of t is advanced by k units this is one method of you know manipulating uh, the signals whether it can be discrete time signal or continuous time signals that is we transform the independent variable t which will result in either delaying of the signal or advancing of the signal let us look at the next method the second technique the second technique deals with folding of a signal folding of signal so these techniques are very commonly used in communication theory so these techniques are important for you even from the examination point of view because in the exam he will give you x of n and then he may ask you to plot x of n minus 2 or x of t minus 2 or x of n plus 2 or x of t plus 2. Or you may have to use the delayed or advanced versions of x of n and x of t for some other purposes. Now let's see what is this folding of signal. This is another modification like I told you. This is the modification of the time base and it is done to replace the independent variable say for discrete time signals the independent variable is n so this will be replaced by minus n so the result of this operation that is replacing the independent variable n by minus n is referred to as folding of the signal this is called folding of the signal at the time origin that is n is equal to 0 for discrete signals. So when you replace n by minus n in for the signal, then this will this is nothing but the folding the signal at n is equal to 0. For your continuous time signals, so you replace t with what is that? minus t. So that is the folding at the time origin t is equal to 0. The concept is the same for both discrete and continuous time signals.
So this is the second technique of manipulating of discrete time signals and continuous time signals. Every technique has got its own uses and it depends it depends on uh, what kind of area in the communication theory you are working on so you will use one of these techniques that I am discussing now. The third one is scaling of signal. Third is scaling of signal. The third modification that can happen to a signal. So here th this modification again it's applied onto the independent variable that is it can be n or t so it involves replacing n by mu n where mu is an integer some integer. I have already used notation k so now I am using mu. So if you replace n by mu n for a discrete time signal, then we say that the signal is scaled by mu units. This time-based modification is called time scaling. For a continuous time signal, you know the independent variable is t. Then if t is replaced by mu t, then we say that this signal is time scaled. So this continuous time signal is time scaled. So these are the three major ma manipulation techniques that are usually applied on on both discrete time signals as well as continuous time signals. So to summarize, so let me give you a table. Which will illustrate what happens when k is positive or negative. So I would like to put it this way. I will write transformation. And then signal shift. So this makes us easy to understand while we know whether the signal needs to be shifted to the right or to the left. So if k is positive, k is positive then you can have n minus k or minus n minus k. So this table refers to the discrete signals because I am using n but do understand that the same technique can be applied onto the continuous time signals. The only difference will be instead of n you will have t. So what happens if you if k is positive and if you have a signal like x of n minus k that means you should understand that the signal will be shifted to the right. So you are expected to plot the signal which is shifted to the right and in this case where it is minus n minus k if k is positive then the signal is expected to shift to the left very important. You don't need to by heart this, but you can verify. In case you get a doubt, you can verify uh, by referring to this table. And k can also take negative value. So what happens if k is negative? If k is negative, again, there are two conditions. One is n minus k and the other, is, other one is minus n minus k. If k is negative, then this becomes n plus some integer value right so which means the signal now needs to be shifted to the left and if it is minus n minus k then the signal needs to be shifted to the right so also note that note that n and k if n and k have the same sign you see how simple it is to remember if n and k have the same sign then left shift then shift the signal to the left that's a tip for you if n and k are of different sign if they are of different sign then what should you do then shift the signal to the right.